Samantha Stoza has made it into the US Open final. The first woman to reach the women's singles final since Wendy Turnbull in 1977. Big story for Adelaide now. For 34 years, we've had people just pretending to be women in the US Open tennis final. Welcome to Media Watch. I'm Jonathan Holmes. And here's Alison Langdon on 60 Minutes, having her mind blown by people who can remember every detail of every day in their lives. Challenger, go with throttle up. The Challenger disaster. Um, Tuesday, January 28th, 1986. And the Super Bowl was the Sunday before. For a touchdown! John Lennon's assassination. That was December 8th, 1980. Do you remember what day of the week it was? Monday. I was in 10th grade. It blows my mind that you can remember that. Hey, Mom, what day was Valentine's Day in 79? It was a Wednesday. And you're right. I've never explained how you do that. I don't do it. I just see it. And you can remember your whole life. Yes, I can remember my whole life. Ever wondered where 60 Minutes gets its story ideas? Well, last week, quite a lot of them were right there in the Channel 9 program guide. Alison's segment was followed by this promo. Detective Carrie Wells never forgets a place, a conversation, a sound, a street, a car, a number plate, face, a glance, a smile, or a clue. Poppy Montgomery, unforgettable, coming soon to nine. Gee, what a coincidence. And in the very same edition of 60 Minutes, Michael Usher brought us a profile of the former bad boy of boxing, Mike Tyson, now the reformed family man. These days, you meet a man who sounds broken, searching for the missing pieces. Yeah, yeah, um, I almost got comfortable being that guy who was out there partying and hanging out. And I almost got too comfortable being that guy and I come to the conclusion that's just not who I am, that's not who I want to be. Mike Tyson, a bit part in the blockbuster hangover films, resurrected Tyson from felon to film star. And at the end of that segment, there was a promo for that night's movie on Nine. And I bet you can't guess what the movie was. I've been waiting for this moment for all my life. One more time, guys. Oh, Lord. The Hangover premieres tonight on Nine. No, you guessed it. You never explain how you do that. Well, at least we don't get that kind of thing on the ABC. No advertising on the national broadcaster, no brand names, no plugs, no promotional guff. ABC Radio, Mid-North Coast Breakfast. Well, it's time to find out what's happening at our ABC shop in Port Macquarie at Settlement City. Uh, Cathy Hunt is uh, with us from the shop. And Cathy, good morning. Good morning, Cameron. How are you today? Where should we start? There's a couple of DVDs I'd like to talk about first, Cameron. Uh, first one is Downton Abbey. I don't think there's really probably a person in Port Macquarie that hasn't heard or seen Downton Abbey, but it's a wonderful series. Sounds like the ABC shop's Cathy Hunt has settled in for a good long spruik there on the mid-north coast, so we'll come back to her a bit later. But over on ABC Television's Midday Report, you can count on proper current affairs, like an analysis of Julia Gillard's chances of surviving as Prime Minister. Centrebet has been working out the odds, and the man with all the numbers is Neil Evans. So, uh, Neil, how do the punters rate Julia Gillard's chances of staying as Prime Minister? Yeah, hi Roz. It's been quite remarkable the last 24 hours. A lot of punters, not just old ones, new ones, opening accounts specifically to bet in this Labor leader book. Why don't you open an account too? Just call Centibet. Oop, sorry, lost the number. Meanwhile, when will the price of gold stop rising? Well, who better to give us a sober and balanced answer to that question than someone who buys and sells gold for a living and would love to do business with you. Roz? Roy Cohen is one trader who believes the price may eventually top 5,000 US dollars. Well, we believe it's got a long way to go. Um, you know, there's, there's, there's absolutely no way of knowing. It, it's more a question of how low can the currencies go, you know. Uh, Roy seems to be going strong too, so we'll come back to him later as well. Over in the commercial media, times are tough, especially in newspapers. Here's an excerpt from an email sent out by a News Limited executive in Western Australia. 
Last Sunday, we published an article in our real estate section that failed Journalism 101. As the managing director of the Sunday Times, I unreservedly apologise for the article. Goodness, the managing director no less. It's usually the editor who worries about editorial content. Managing directors of newspapers worry about money. And usually that means advertisers. And to whom was this grovel addressed? To our valued real estate clients. That's right. Real estate agents. Who, thanks to those endless house for sale ads, account for a sizeable chunk of the Sunday Times' revenue. Not to mention what they contribute to realestate.com.au, by far the leading property website in Australia, which is 60% owned by News Limited. So what was this abysmal journalism that Mr Scott was apologising for? It was a double-paid spread in the Sunday Times' Weekend property. Home alone. It can cost more than $20,000 to sell your home through a real estate agent. We speak to two vendors who decided to go it alone. No, without an agent? And look at them. They're positively beaming. Being able to talk directly with the buyers ensured queries could be answered quickly and efficiently. We saved about $17,000 and put in about 19 hours' work in five weeks. Well, you can imagine how the Sunday Times' valued real estate clients reacted to that piece. Uh, actually, you don't have to imagine it because we can show you. It was kicked off by investment property specialist Mark Hay with an email addressed to pretty much every real estate agent west of the Nullarbor. It was, as they say, heavy with irony. Fellow colleagues... For those of you who use the Murdoch-backed Sunday Times, you will have no doubt noted the huge push they gave us as agents in their wonderful article on page four and five this weekend. Mr Hay didn't mess about. Can I encourage you to boycott the paper in light of this? Or better still, this is a perfect reason why we as agents should build our own website to challenge realestate.com.au and the others who keep putting the squeeze on us. Anyone interested? Lots of people were. I'm interested in a change from this. David Whiteman, Ray White. It is heartening to see the discussion around creating a new industry-owned and controlled website. Jeff Baldwin, Remax, WA. The Davy Group would be behind a move to advertise through rewire.com only. Andrew Davy. Mark Hay was over the moon. Wow, the response has been overwhelming. By far, the huge majority confirm we should crank up Rewa. Rewa is the Real Estate Institute of Western Australia, which has long had its own property ad website. Feature properties for sale. And has recently teamed up with the Sunday Times' rival, the West Australian, to produce... westrealestate.com.au The West is spruiking its new website for all it's worth. West Real Estate. This exciting new site is offering vendors a free listing when their agent is a current Rewa subscriber. No wonder the managing director of the Sunday Times was freaking out at the thought of all those valued real estate clients jumping ship. Hence his crawling email. I give you my personal guarantee that the Sunday Times will work hard to restore our relationship to the mutual good health and prosperity that we have achieved together over many years. The problem was, wrote Jason Scott, that the Home Alone piece was unbalanced because it did not contain any response from agents or real estate industry groups, and nor did it look at vendors who had tried to sell their houses privately, who had then appointed an agent and got the right result. Well, that's true, and it was a bit of a puff job for one particular do-it-yourself consultancy. But some of the offended agents weren't going to be fobbed off with a private apology. Glenn Buckley of Think Pink Realty, yes, that's its name, wrote back to Mr Scott in a nice pink font. Your apology is noted. However, what is clearly required here is a full rebuttal in this week's issue of your newspaper. Well, he didn't get that, but what he did get in that Sunday's weekend property was a full double-page puff job for real estate agents. Agent wanted. Why are agents worth the money? Following last week's article on private selling, we look at the other side. Three happy clients, 
are no fewer than seven deeply sincere real estate agents. And why was that published, we asked the acting editor. Well, naturally... To balance the one-sided feature that appeared on August 21st. Balance, the essence of sound journalism. Uh, no mention of that other principle of newspaper management, safeguarding editorial from advertiser pressure. Now, how's Cathy Hunt from the ABC shop going up there on the New South Wales mid-north coast? Now that leads me on to everybody's favourite Grand Designs UK. We're actually up to Series 8. Uh, pretty well, actually. In fact, she's been banging on for four minutes without drawing breath and without Cameron Marshall getting a word in. In fact, we suspect he's popped out for Smoko. For example, the first home he visits is a treehouse on the Isle of Wight and he finishes the series in a dome-style house in the Lakes District. Fascinating, Cathy. Must pop in and snap up the series. As for the great gold rush on the Midday Report, well, Ros Childs is gallantly trying to insert a modicum of scepticism into the embarrassing interview with the gold merchant that her team has foisted on her. And we're not seeing some sort of gold bubble which might pop at some point? Well, no, we don't believe so. We don't think that uh, gold is a financial asset like other financial assets are that's been overextended. Gold is the real form of money. Gold is real money. And editorial like that is pure gold worth lots of real money for the gold company. It's not a good look for the ABC. That's it for this week. But wait, before we go, don't forget you can download a vodcast of Media Watch from our website, Perfect for that idle quarter of an hour. Or watch it again on iView. You can follow us on Twitter and join the Media Watch tweeps every Monday night at this hashtag. So many choices. However you view the programme, there'll be another one next week. Uh, but alas, no free steak knives. Good night. <laughs>